Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about interesting discussion I had with my friend. My friend is now a reporter. I met him in Richmond, Virginia. I was doing a internship at a patent law firm and he was a reporter. He was doing his internship at a widely regarded news channel. And we're talking about the old times where we play during Zendikar, original Zendikar, and you could have literally anything in that set and it would have been valuable. You could have a box, an unopened box, and there were plenty of unopened boxes at the time, and it could be quite valuable. And Zendikar was a very popular set. The player growth was humongous. And not only Zendikar, but you had the entire block be very good. Rise of the Adrazi was very good. And Jace the Mind Sculptor block with Manlands was very good. And we're talking about today and why the prices are not what they are today. I feel like it has a lot to do with the advice people are taking, which is incorrect. I will just point blank say that the advice people were giving at this time, RTR, Dragon Maze, Gatecrash, and now Origins, whatever they're telling you to buy and just keep in your closet is not going to work out for you. And I have a few interesting concepts of what's going on. So Dragon Maze, we have one card over $10, and that card, honestly, you could get a better version for under 10. Gate Crash, you have five cards over $10, and then next card being $5. And they are the Shocklands. The Shocklands and Gate Crash are slightly less common than RTR, just given the fact that Gate Crash was a second set, and a lot of people bought a ton of RTR. As always, you might be like, hmm, why should we go over this historical event? Because it's happened again with Battle for Zendikar. I have friends who purchased one or two boxes of a set as a casual player. Battle for Zendikar came around and they were told by many people and store owners as well, you need to buy so many X cases. So my friend bought 10 cases of it. And we opened it in the store, we hung out, it was kind of fun. I have some video of it. We literally stopped taking videos because it was not fun anymore. This will happen again and again and again because it is the un... How should I say it? it is stupid. Okay, so the gate crash, we have five cards, all shock lands over $10 and then the next card is $5 and every other card under is under $5. This is not a good indication of you should hold this box, especially since, as I will show you, the current box prices. RTR is a little higher, but there's no reason for it to be and because the value is not there. So Steam Vents, 11 bucks, the only card over $10. Then we got Overgrown Tomb, Temple, Chromantic, Blood Crypt, and Rest in Peace, and Hollow Fountain. And the next card is Supreme Verdict, Abrupt Decay, and Rift. So overall, what I'm here to say is a lot of people were told, buy RTR, put it in your closet, and one day it will become valuable. Because when I played in Zendikar, that's exactly what happened. You didn't even need to have sealed boxes, right? I mean, that would be great, but whatever. Your Everything that you had was valuable. Your fetch lands were valuable. It was impossible to play a deck. Even the mono red decks ran fetch lands. And I know a lot of you are confused of why it does that. But I'm telling you, all the mono red decks ran the ste four steam vents and four uh, air mesas. They just did. I mean, I can't tell you why, but they just did. Statistically, I think it's slightly better that you don't get uh, mana flooded, which is very bad for a deck. But back then... You, whatever deck you had is valuable. Like it's just, it just kept increasing in price and never stopped increasing in price until reprints. So literally RTR, you were told by many MTG finance people and many people in the community who have incentive to sell you these boxes, keep them, hold on to these boxes. And one day you will be rich. So, okay, cool. I'm a casual player. I'll listen to you random dude on the internet. And they bought boxes and cases and they put them in the closet. This was the perfect picture. This is not the cheapest you can buy this for, but I'll, it's the perfect image that summarized what happened here. People bought boxes and they literally put them in the closet and they hoped one day they would be worth gold. However, 
you have a storm of different events happening. A, I will say RTR was a very powerful set. It had an abrupt decay, it had Death Right Shaman, a lot of things, and the five shock lands, obviously. A lot of things in RTR were very pushed, and that is what they said. The guy who left, who was the set designer, left, he said he left with style, and we all agreed at the time. Here's the problem. The problem is quite easy to understand. There's too much of it. There's just too much of this, and people are telling you to buy more and more in store. There are, at my current game store, you can get an RTR box for $80 cash with tax. And there are literally cases of this stuff sitting around. And Dave and Adams, there are cases of this stuff sitting around. All across the web and on eBay, you're not going to you are not going to see this price. It's been long enough, right? Enough time has passed that if this box were ever to move, it would have moved already. It's not going to move. One of many reasons why it's not going to move, I now want to turn my attention to pre-release kits. And I know a lot of you think, oh, pre-release kits are really valuable. My store sells it for... You just go on eBay and buy them. You can buy any pre-release kit from from the Amaket set to Gatecrass and RTR and Dragon Maze. I have a eBay auction of Dragon Maze where you can get five kits for like, I want to say $40 or something ridiculous, like less than $10 a kit. That's how bad it was. That's how bad it is today. So when people say, oh, you should buy boxes of Origins and sit on them. Like, I, do you know how much a box of Origins is right now? and you expect it to go up in price, RTR is a way stronger set than Magic Origins. Yeah, Magic Origins is the last core set, but look at the prices today. Look at this, $65, buy now with uh, shipping. I believe this has shipping. I don't know, I can't read it. So, oh no, you have to pay $5 shipping, sorry, $70. I know Dave and Adams has sales on this all the time, and I've seen prices below 70 with free shipping and then free stuff and gifts. This is what magic is today. People have been sitting on old boxes and making a killing, a killing for a long time. The game has changed. The game has changed. So the concept of, oh, I'm going to buy lots of Kaladas and I'll sit on these boxes of Kaladas and one day my boxes I bought for $90 will be $190. Okay. Now the Biggest example of this is Dragon's Maze. $62, my store sells it for 65 cash, and no one wants to touch this. There's more than 10 that you can buy. It's such a toxic asset. And it wasn't just the individual customers who got screwed, it was the local game stores. If your local game store bought into the hype of this set, they were they still have this set left. There's no way they got rid of all of it. Even when they tried to set it on fire, they're just sitting on these boxes and no one wants them. No one wants them. So why would you want them? Why would you want to keep hoarding them and storing them and putting them in your closet? This is a terrible product. Magic Origins is a terrible product. Frontier is not real. Like I wish it was, but it's disproved pretty much went the way of uh, Tiny Leaders, which is, Tiny Leaders was also not real. But I used to buy, my friends and I used to split $5,000, and I have videos of this in my channel, uh, $5,000 of in cases of fat packs as well as just stuff, right? Mostly booster boxes, right? And look, $40, you're getting five pre-release kits, five of them. That's pretty good, but no one even wants this. No one wants it. It's less than $10 a pre-release kit, but no one even wants to buy at that price point. You get six booster packs for $10. That sounds okay. The only, oh, back to my story. I was talking, to, so to conclude my story, my friend's like, yeah, it would be ridiculous to buy into Magic right now. 
I have not bought any Amaket. I have bought very little Kaladesh. And my friends just, no one will go in and buy these booster packs anymore, or booster boxes. No one wants to sit on these anymore. I have unsealed boxes of Innistrad, Lorwyn, um, Evening Tide. I'm looking at this right now. I'm looking, Planar Chaos, I have a sealed box of that. It used to be back in the day, you buy a box of magic cards, you buy, and then I open half a case, and then I get to keep half a case sealed for draft one night. Uh, Innistrad being the most recent one, when my the local game store went out of business, I bought two cases of Innistrad. I still have about five boxes sealed of Innistrad. And that box has gone up a ton in price. But since RTR, enough time has passed that it really is worrying me about this type of thing. So I have not bought any amount of boxes. I'm just gonna to stick to singles. And that is what I heavily advise you to do unless you're drafting or you're doing sealed, unless you're utilizing the box itself in some uh, way that adds value to what you're doing with it. Otherwise, you know, we go over all, all these prices and I've never seen what I see today where every set has one card over $10 and that's it. Battle for Zendikar, get in. Oath of the Gatewatch, I don't know, uh, the uh, Kozilak, right? Is it Kozilak? No, Ogamog, Yugamog. Someone correct me about that spelling. Um, and then let's see, Aldric Moon, we had Lily. And then I'm missing one. Oh, Shadows over Innistrad, is Averson still over 10 bucks, maybe? Kaladesh. I don't know. Um, I know Heart of Kinrin is worth the money in Aether Revolt. And now we're in Amaket where everything is in a plummet stage right now. And I don't expect many of those cards that are over $10 to be over $10 in a month from now. I just have to tell you, things have changed. Um, it is not the same. In the olden days, you could be, you could pick any card you wanted. As long as it saw some playability, you would look like an MTG finance genius. Welcome to reality. This is reality. The golden days of picking, of buying a booster box, putting it in your closet, having it double or triple in value, like original Zendikar, like Rise from the Eldrazi, like even Innistrad, right? That's a recent set. Innistrad's pretty recent. New Phyrexia. Since RTR, way too much of it has been printed and way too much of it is still in people's closets and in stores. It all creates this storm of circumstances where I don't want to touch a box from RTR. And I, I still do fat packs because fat packs, like I've said many times before, when we buy fat packs, it's really nice to have a draft, drink some uh, beer, have you know some pizza, but really bad Chinese food. We actually had that yesterday, really bad Chinese food from the gas station. But it's bad. It's so bad, it's good. My advice to you is study, you know, look at every box, every expected value, go on eBay, check all these boxes, and you will probably conclude what I have. They just are not what they used to be. Anyway, bye guys.